Obama is the first uh, president that I knew before he was president. The others I got to know afterwards. And he says, have you talked to the president about religion? I said, yeah, back when he was a state senator. So I'll give you this background that I gave the senior reporter about President Obama. It's really the background for the speech that you just read about Obama's understanding of faith in public life. So he's a state senator from Illinois. Some of you know the book Bowling Alone, Robert Putnam. He's a Harvard professor. Bob Putnam started this group called the Saguaro Seminar. <laughs> it was really about 25 people he got to get together every three months for two years to talk about social capital <laughs> and um, social capital and how it's changing, social capital in young people, in the arts, politics, religion. And he got us together every three or four months for two days to talk together. And a lot of us went because it was very stimulating. And out of that seminar, Bob wrote the book, Bowling Alone. <laughs> so we, we, we were the grist for his a very interesting book called Bowling Alone, How We're Losing in America's Social Capital. So George Stephanopoulos was in the group. Now he's with ABC, Marcia, Martha Minow, who's now uh, uh, heads of Harvard Law School, John Delio from Penn. Uh, Ralph Reed was there occasionally. A um, uh, number of people that were very interesting. And one politician, this skinny kid from Illinois that no one had heard of before, walked in the room one day and said his name was Barack Obama. Now why was one state legislator in the room? None of us really knew. He was the least famous person in the room in the group. And he began to talk and we realized we could tell why he was there. He was interesting. He was, he was uh, provocative. He was uh, loved to have conversations. So he and I hit it off and we'd be put on buses. We'd go to sites. We'd go to places where people were doing things and we'd go and ask questions and we'd, you know, do analysis. So we'd get on the bus and we'd go off to the site and we'd often sit together and we had conversations about three things. Me on the state senator. Now, he's not, he's a state senator. He's not even yet running for the Senate, let alone the presidency. So I don't think even back then Barack was thinking White House. In, in, in fact, to make the point, I, I moved house about three years ago. And I moved all my books from my little home study in one house to the new house. And so those of us have lots of books sometimes remember this is before ebooks and Kindle so I've just got lots of books and I put them in a box and put them back on my new shelf and I took the occasion to put the books right where I wanted them in my new library and I got to his books and I picked up dreams of my father and so I just picked it up and recalled when I got it and I opened it up and here's uh, it's the first edition first uh, hardcover edition and nice long inscription from Barack Obama, nice letter inside. And I remember him saying, nobody will ever read this book, but I want you to have a copy. <laughs> nobody will ever read it, but I want you to have a copy. That's what he was thinking back in those days. I wrote this book about my history. Nobody will ever read it, but I would like you to have it and read it so we can keep talking. Three topics we talked about. One, he had an adult conversion. His father was, as he said in the speech, father was uh, born Muslim but now atheist. His mother was uh, non-religious, agnostic, very spiritual, wonderful person, he, he said, but not religious. He's working on Chicago's South Side with churches uh, funded by the uh, Catholic Bishops Conference. And he's watching faith and watching churches as an observer. And he tells a story in the speech, which you read, of how he came to his faith, a, a personal faith decision. He actually walked down the aisle at Trinity in Southside Chicago. Uh, and for those of you who know that, that's how, you know, the altar call is how, in my tradition, that's how you come to faith. He walked down the aisle, dropped to his knees, gave his life to God. This was an adult conversion. But he got converted to a faith that was really shaped by the African-American church tradition 
about justice, as we've been talking about, uh, good news to the poor, uh, all of that. He was not converted to Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, and the religious right. So we always want, he wanted to talk about, he'd become a Christian, but he wasn't religious right. He was, he said, I think I'm a progressive Christian or something. I'm not sure what that means. What does that mean? How do you be a Christian but not be with those guys? But I'm serious about my new faith and I want to apply it to the world. So we had conversations about theology, faith, conversion. Uh, he still had doubts. How do you have doubts and still choose faith? It was a very theological conversation. Second topic was, I think he would say, the left and the right are, are political straitjackets that don't allow us to solve our problems. Liberal, conservative, they're stuck, they can't solve problems. So again, way before the White House, he was thinking about that. Third, our topic was we were both older fathers with young kids. I'm older than him, but we both were older fathers. And we talked about parenting, being a dad and try to balance that with busy lives and the truth. Those are our topics, three topics. We talked all the time about those things. So I explained to the CNN reporter, bat background, three questions, adult conversion. Uh, okay, so where's his faith had an impact, says CNN. Where do you see evidence of his faith? I said, well, okay, we're in the Roosevelt Room in the White House. He and his team are on one side of the table. On our side uh, are the churches, the Catholic bishops, the National Association of Evangelists. I've told you the story. We're there, he's there, and Bishop Ramirez from New Mexico says to the President of the United States, Mr. President, the text that brings us here to this table and this meeting is from Matthew 25, and it does not say, as you've done to the middle class, you've done to me. It doesn't say that. It says, as you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. And the President of the United States said, I know that text. I know that text. And we said to him, then you must protect poor and low-income people from being cut out of this debt crisis deal you're about to make a year ago last July about to make a deal on the debt crisis, impacting everyone. We said, you got to protect them in your deal if you're going to take seriously the 25th chapter of Matthew. We had a rigorous conversation. He did not commit to that in the meeting. An hour later, they called and said, the president is going to do what you've asked. We're going to protect low-income entitlements in the sequester. And they did. And in the video that you saw from him, what did he say? You asked me to protect poor people. I did and I will. That's what he said. I did and I will. So I told CNN this. And he said, OK, yeah. Um, how about that Easter prayer breakfast thing he does? You know, and the Muslim stuff he has and all that. You know. There are any other examples of where he applies his faith? <laughs> this is kidding. I said, yeah, yeah. Um, I said, you, know, you remember when they deferred action against um, a million young undocumented people? Oh, yeah, I remember that, says the reporter. Well, um, uh, for the White House, for him, that comes right out of that same text in Matthew 25 where he says, Jesus says, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Now, the faith community, I explained to CNN, the evangelical immigration table made it possible for Obama to do this. The White House said, you gave us the space to do this, but they wanted to do it because they felt, number one, it was good for politics, good for Hispanic votes. They did feel that. But also, they thought this was the right thing to do. And for Obama, it was part of his, his faith commitment. 